How's it going? I'm Casey Martin from Wine Country Pens and Wine Country Woodworks, and this is going to be a video on the five best tips that I wanted to share when using Illumilite. So this is going to specifically apply to Illumilite Clear and the slow set version of Illumilite Clear because that's what I use the most of, but it can apply to Illumilite White and most of the other casting resins that they offer. So getting right into it, one of the first tips I wanted to mention that isn't a tip that I'll spend a lot of time on, but it is making sure your material that you're going to embed in any type of Illumilite resin is 100% dry. Because if it's not 100% dry and has any type of moisture in it, you'll end up getting a foamy and bubbly type of resin when it all comes out. So if it looks like that and you are embedding some material in it, that is the problem. The best way to do, uh, avoid that is to do the stabilizing process because in that process you get all the moisture out, but if you don't do that process, just put all of your wood or material, whatever it is, in an oven or a toaster oven for 24 hours minimum at about 220 degrees Fahrenheit, and that should get all the moisture out. Just make sure when you take it out of the oven that you put it in an airtight container while it cools down so it doesn't soak up any more moisture from the air. So moving on to the second tip is that if you're trying to do color swirls in Illumilite, whether it's with material embedded in the resin or not, it's much easier and better to do it with a larger mold, more specifically a wider mold. Because when I first started doing casting, I was using one of these single blank molds, and they work great. However, it's much harder to use a barbecue skewer or popsicle stick, whatever you're using, to swirl around the colors. And especially when you are trying to embed material in it, it's much harder to maneuver around as well. And so, going on with the molds, moving on to my tip number three is to use HDPE plastic, and that's what this mold and all of my molds that I regularly use are made out of. And HDPE plastic, the reason why it's so great is because the Illumilite doesn't stick to it when it hardens. It will not necessarily stick to it, it'll stay cling to it, I guess is the best word, but as soon as you give it any type of force, to separate it or if you try to scrape it off, it'll just pop right off and come right off. And if anybody has watched any other tutorials or videos about Illumilite and I've heard the use of melamine, that is the second best option. But the reason why it's not the best option for making molds is because melamine, as some of you may know, has particle board in the center of it. And so when you're using it as a mold, it has a tendency to seep into the cracks and into the particle board, and it can just make everything all messy and tough to deal with. But if you just notice, what I do use it for is one of my mold racks is made out of melamine. And that's awesome for me when I have an issue with resin seeping through some of the cracks of a new mold I just made, or I spill a little bit, it's really easy to get off compared to some of my plywood and just total wood mold racks, which still work great, but if I do have a little spill or something, I'll have to spend a lot more time with a knife or sandpaper getting rid of it. So hopefully that is a good tip. If you guys haven't heard about HDPE plastic, you can find it on Amazon or possibly locally. Just look it up. It's not too hard to find and it's not that expensive either. So the fourth tip is to use Illumilite dyes, but not necessarily their powders, their pearlescent powders. I use two powders from Illumilite that I find are really good and hard to replicate from other companies, which is their gold metallic powder and their silver metallic powder but almost any other type of pearlescent powder I use is from a company called Pearlex. It's made by Jack Wired Products, and I will leave a link down below to their site, but you can find that Pearlex at Michael's or local craft centers nearby, wherever you are, most likely in the US, and also on Amazon or other online places. It's pretty easy to find, and they have over 100 colors, I believe, of different powders. And I think the first time I got it, I got a sample pack of like 64 colors. I ended up finding the best 10 or 12 that I 
liked a lot and use and still use and I just got bigger sizes of them and they're cheaper than Illumilite and they're I, I think they're a lot better because that's all the company really specializes in and the Illuma dust that I believe it's called from Illumilite isn't necessarily bad it's just the Pearl X powders are superior at least in my opinion so that's a tip that I wanted to share and then moving on to the fifth and final tip is that if you are trying to embed material or anything into resin, you might have had issues with the material floating up. And the best solution I've came up with that is to use glue. And the first time I tried to use it, or the first few times, I used CA glue. And I was actually surprised at how well the CA glue stuck to the HDPE plastic of my molds because mo most things don't stick to it. But what ended up happening is that it ended up making my molds really gross and uneven and it was just annoying because I'd have to sand or scrape off the CA glue every time because when I take out the resin from the mold, the resin would come up fine, but the little pieces of glue that I used to hold down the wood would still stay on the mold. And so if hopefully you guys can kind of see, but there's little pieces that I've had to scrape off and the mold still works fine, of course, but the solution I found to it, which is much better, is to use glue from a hot glue gun. It's much cheaper than using CA glue all the time, and more importantly, it's more effective in terms of sticking to the Illumilite resin when you take the whole res resin block out of the mold. And I still have problems every now and then with some of the hot glue sticking to the mold and not the resin when you take the resin out of the mold, but it doesn't happen as often and more importantly when it does happen it's so much easier than the CA glue to scrape off. I usually just do like one pass with a Stanley knife and all the glue will come off and if you really wanted to make it perfect again you could just use a hot air gun or some type of heat and it would make the glue loosen up again. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these tips. I don't know, this is one of the first videos I've done of just sitting here and talking to you guys. So let me know what you guys think about that and about the tips. If you guys would like a longer list of smaller tips that I could share, I'll definitely do that. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below in the comment section or shoot me an email. I love to help anybody out with their questions because a fellow YouTuber who does very similar things to this, and I'll leave a link down below to his channel, is Zach Higgins. He helped me out a lot with all of my questions when I first got into resin casting, and so it feels good to pay it forward and help everyone out as well. So if you liked the video, please give the video a thumbs up. If you disliked it, leave a comment down below of why you didn't like it and what I could do better. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot and it also allows you to see my future content as soon as it comes out. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.